Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savage. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 11th of January. India's PM Modi meets chief ministers ahead of COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Pakistan's opposition slammed government following massive blackout. And Nepal's PM Oli says parliament dissolution, a political issue, top court should dismiss case. And now for all the details. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday interacted with chief ministers of all states via video conferencing to discuss the COVID-19 situation and the coronavirus vaccination rollout. India has said it would start one of the largest vaccination drives in the world from 16th of January. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday said the two approved Made in India COVID-19 vaccines are more cost-effective than foreign vaccines and have been developed as per needs and situation in the country. As he chaired a meeting with chief ministers of all states to review the COVID-19 vaccine rollout plan set to begin from January 16, PM Modi assured every effort has been undertaken to ensure safety of the vaccines. He informed the centre not states will bear the expenses for the first phase of the vaccination of 300 million healthcare and frontline workers. He said public representatives would not be among those to be vaccinated first. India has authorised two COVID-19 vaccines, indigenous Bharat Biotech's Covaxin and the Covishield vaccine by Serum Institute of India for emergency use. The government has already held nationwide dry runs twice for the vaccine. ये वैक्सीन भारत की स्थितियां और परिस्थितियों को देखते हुए निर्मित की गई है भारत के टीकाकरण का जो अनुभव है जो दूर सुदूर क्षेत्रों तक पहुंचने की व्यवस्थाएं हैं वो कोरोना वैक्सीनेशन कार्यक्रम में बहुत उपयोगी सिद्ध होने वाली है इन द लेटेस्ट द सेरम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंडिया ऑन मंडे सेड द गवर्नमेंट हैज सेंड द परचेज ऑर्डर फॉर द कोरोना वायरस वैक्सीन्स एंड इट वुड बी अवेलेबल at a price of rupees 200 per vial. India's Supreme Court on Monday, while hearing a number of petitions challenging the new farm laws, as well as the ones related to the ongoing agitation at Delhi borders, said it was disappointed with the way negotiations between the government and the farmers have progressed. This comes as eight round of talks between the centre and the farmer unions on January 7 failed as the centre ruled out repealing the contentious laws. The Apex Court has now asked the centre to stay the laws till a committee constituted by it discuss the same and submits a report. The court was scheduled to pass orders in this regard till the last reports came in. Hundreds of farmers are protesting at various border points of capital New Delhi since late November against the three farm laws that liberalise agriculture sector. Monday's hearing in the Supreme Court assumes significance as the centre and the farmer leaders are scheduled to hold their next meeting on January 15th. Indian capital New Delhi and Western Maharashtra state on Monday confirmed bird flu cases amid nationwide efforts to contain the spread. Seven other states including Uttar Pradesh, Kerala and Himachal Pradesh had earlier confirmed avian influenza or the bird flu as the cause of the recent bird deaths. At least nine states of India have confirmed the cases of avian influenza or bird flu while others are waiting for the test results. In the latest national capital New Delhi, and the western state of Maharashtra confirmed the flu cases on Monday. New Delhi had last week closed wholesale pottery markets after nearly 200 birds, mostly crows, were found dead. Visitors have also been barred from parks with water bodies, lakes and wildlife sanctuaries in the national capital region.
अधिकारियों के साथ और एक्सपर्ट्स के साथ में इसकी पूरा रिव्यू किया है पूरी सिचुएशन का मैं उस रिव्यू के आधार पर आम जनता से कहना चाहता हूं कि घबराने की कोई ज़रूरत नहीं है पैनिक की कोई ज़रूरत नहीं है आ, सरकार पूरी कोशिश में है कि इसके स्प्रेड को रोक लिया जाए केसेज ऑफ बर्ड फ्लू हैव ऑल्सो बीन कन्फर्म बाई उत्तर प्रदेश केरला राजस्थान मध्य प्रदेश हिमाचल प्रदेश हरियाणा एंड गुजरात अकॉर्डिंग टू दल गवर्नमेंट बर्ड फ्लू अफेक्ट मेनली पोट्री एंड वाइल्ड बर्ड्स बट कैन इन्फेक्ट ह्यूमन क्लोज कॉन्टैक्ट विद सिक बर्ड्स इन न्यूज फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान Opposition parties have slammed Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government following a massive power failure across the country over the weekend. Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz leader Ehsan Iqbal said the unprecedented breakdown proves that the government is incompetent to run the country and should quit. Opposition Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz or PMLN Secretary General Ehsan Iqbal on Sunday lashed out at the government following a massive power failure across the country on Saturday night saying that Prime Minister Imran Khan had attempted to reboot the country which is facing an economic crisis Ehsan Iqbal in a video post on Twitter remarked that the unprecedented shutdown proves that Imran Khan led government is incompetent and unqualified and it should resign ke ye hukumat na layak hai na ahal hai aur inke paas mulk chalane ki koi salahiyat nahi hai imran niyazi sahab ne samjha ke mulk ki maishat din ba din doob rahi hai naye naye bohran paida ho rahe hain aur pakistan ko bhi mobile phone ki tarah reboot karke dekha jaye shayad ye chal jaye islamabad deputy commissioner hamza shafqat in a tweet said the blackout was caused by the tripping of the system of the national transmission and dispatch company the breakdown plunged the country into darkness on saturday night and mobile and internet services were also affected due to the breakdown and continued to remain disrupted the next day in the latest media report said the power had been restored and at least seven officials were suspended on account of negligence during their duties moving on Several activists held a demonstration outside the residence of Pakistani ambassador to the US this past weekend against the arrest of lawmakers and leaders of the Pashtun Tahafuz movement in Pakistan. They demanded the immediate release of the Pashtun leaders who they blamed for being falsely prosecuted on anti-state charges. Scores of activists held a demonstration in front of the residence of Pakistani ambassador in Washington this past weekend against the arrest of lawmakers and leaders of Pashtun Tahafuz movement or PTM in Pakistan. Members of PTM, a civil rights movement, demanded the immediate release of Pashtun leader Syed Alam Mehsood who was jailed for participating in a protest against earlier arrest of PTM leader Ali Wazir. a sitting member of National Assembly of Pakistan in December for allegedly making anti-state comments The protesters rejected the accusations and demanded the immediate and unconditional release of both the leaders while highlighting that they were being prosecuted on anti-state charges and we demanded a release of Ali Wazir and Dr Said Alam uh, and all other PTM uh, members that are uh, in in jail and they've been there for months and uh, we demanded to release them without any preconditions we were wahan par minorities awaaz uthate hain apne tahaffuz ke liye apne bachon ki tahaffuz ke liye apne khitte ki hifazat ke liye to pakistan unko charge kar rahe hain pakistan un par zulm kar rahe hain unko mukhtalif tareeqon se unko mukhtalif bahanon se unko jail mein lekar ja rahe hain members of pashtun ethnic minority have long blamed that they have been targets of military operations ethnic stereotyping and forced disappearances and fake encounters by pakistani security forces moving on to news from nepal nepal's caretaker prime minister kp sharma oli while calling his move of dissolving the lower house of the parliament a political issue has suggested the supreme court to stay out of the matter This comes as there are 13 petitions filed in the apex court challenging the Oli government's move. Claiming move of December 20 to dissolve the lower house of Nepali parliament as political, 
caretaker Prime Minister of Income and Nepali Government, KP Sharma Oli, has suggested the court to stay out of it. Oli's comment comes at a time when a total of 13 petitions are filed in the Supreme Court of Nepal, challenging decision of Oli and President Vidya Devi Bhandari to dissolve the parliament, claiming it unconstitutional. The apex court has yet to give verdict on writ petitions. Following the dissolution of the lower house and the announcement of midterm elections by Oli, the ruling Nepal Communist Party or NCP Witness its vertical split as the already strained ties between the two rival factions within the party further deepened. The Oli led faction is backing the dissolution of the house, while the other faction, led by Pushpa Kamal Dahal, is formally opposing the government's move and demanding the restoration of parliament. The Sri Lankan Navy has arrested nine Indian fishermen and seized one boat for allegedly fishing in its waters, officials said on Sunday. Fishermen from both countries frequently stray into each other's territory and end up spending years in jails. Sri Lankan Navy arrested nine Indian fishermen and seized their boat for allegedly fishing in its territorial waters, local media reported on Sunday. Reportedly, the arrests were made near Delft Island. India shares an expansive oceanic border with Sri Lanka without any perceptible demarcation and fishermen on both sides ignore rules while netting their cat. Sri Lanka has long fumed over poaching and illegal fishing by Indian fishermen that it says depletes the catches of its own fishermen. Fishermen from both countries frequently stray into each other's territory and end up spending years in jails. In a historic feat, national carrier Air India's longest direct route flight with an all-women pilot team landed in southern India from the United States flying over the North Pole. Air India has said the flight is the longest commercial flight in the world to be operated by it or any other airline in the country. An all-women crew of National Carrier Air India's longest direct flight from San Francisco to India's southern Bengaluru landed on Monday morning after covering a distance of 16,000 kilometers in which the crew flew over the North Pole. Sporting a black uniform and donning the Air India's cap, the women pilots receive a grand welcome at the Kempe Gaura International Airport. The non-stop journey took almost 17 hours and saved about 10 tons of fuel. India's Civil Aviation Minister Hardeep Singh Puri in a Twitter post congratulated the pilots for achieving the historic feat and hailed women power. Today is the day we create world history by not only flying the route over the North Pole, by having all women pilots who successfully did it. And uh, it is also amongst one of the world's longest flights. So we are extremely happy and proud to be part of it. Air India has claimed it is the longest commercial flight in the world to be operated by it or any other airline in India. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasia newsline and follow us on Twitter at sasia newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button